What's up guys, we're gonna do a quick instructional video on spring compressors. I'm gonna show you two common types of spring compressors, both an internal compressor and an external compressor, usually used for McPherson style struts. And we're gonna show you how they work, which ones to select, how to do it safely, all on my 1964 Mercury Comet. Okay, first things first, why are you gonna need a spring compressor? Well, let me show you. For example, I've got a brand new spring here that's gonna go on my Comet. Now this could be a lowering spring, it could just be a stock replacement spring. And here is the spring that is on my car currently. Now, everything has basically been unhooked. Now the upper and lower control arms are still connected, but everything is unhooked. This spring is at completely full droop, max extension. And to prove it to you, uh, the upper control arm is resting on the frame. That is as far down as that can go. And with it like that, you will never get that spring out of there. You need to compress the spring to make it shorter in order to get it out of the car safely. So enter spring compressors. Now, there's kind of two main types. We'll start with this one since this is usually the type that you're probably most used to seeing. So this one is from Harbor Freight. You can get these from all over the place. You can rent them, buy them. I just went ahead and bought them because I figured I was gonna use it a couple times. So. Right here for McPherson struts. Now these style of spring compressors go on the outside of the springs in two locations. So for example, they would hook like this. The other part would hook under a lower coil down there. You would do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, and once you've got it, now obviously I don't have it hooked in place because I'm holding the camera with one hand, but if you had this hooked up underneath one of these and that up there, you could tighten these nuts in unison and it would squish the spring together. That works fine if you've got plenty of room to get in there and work on the car. On a truck, that might be totally fine. On a car, like this car, for example, like an old Mustang, a Comet, a Falcon, you don't have a lot of room. So in that case, what do you do? You can't get both of these in here because again, this is only gonna work if you have both. You can't just put one on one side and squeeze it. It's not gonna work. It's not going to be safe. So what do you do? You have to go to what's called an internal spring compressor. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull that out of the box. I'm gonna show you some things that's written on the box that's very important. Anytime you're dealing with this, you're compressing a spring, there is a ton of stored energy. You see videos, you hear about things where people do this improperly. They have a tool that's worn out, that's not designed correctly. If this thing were to come apart, it could seriously injure you, honestly, or kill you. So before we pull this out, I'm gonna show you two things in the box to read and look at, and then you're gonna take some measurements on your springs to make sure it's gonna work for you and you don't have the wrong tool. Let me show you. You're gonna need a tape measure. Um, I'm gonna have a caliper here just to make it a little bit more easy to read. But if you don't have a caliper, don't worry, a tape measure will do fine. Anytime you're working with a spring compressor, it is going to say on the outside of the box or sometimes in the literature, what size it is meant to use. So if you read for this style, the external style, this one says, handle springs with uncompressed length up to 10 inches. What that means is this is uncompressed, okay? So if I go ahead and take my tape measure and measure it, if it's more than 10 inches uncompressed, it's really not designed for that spring. Let's measure this one and see if it would work. Okay, right off the bat, this one right here is right around 12 inches. So again, even if this would fit, this really is not the compressor for that spring, but there's more stuff to it than just that. So it says it works with 5 8 inch springs with a maximum coil diameter of six inches. What do they mean by that? Well, let's talk about the second part first maximum coil diameter. They mean the outer diameter of the spring. This one is right around five inches. So, you know, this actually, from that standpoint, would work with this compressor, but because it's longer than 10 inches, it's not recommended. The next thing to talk about is 5 8 inch springs. What they mean there is the diameter of the coil. So you could do this with a tape measure. We'll just go ahead here and we will measure. Boom, 0.704, okay, 0.698. So basically, this right here is telling me that this is the wrong tool for the job. This is not what you wanna use. So let's go ahead and look at our internal spring compressor and just reading the box. Let's see, is it gonna work? Okay, safely remove and install coil springs with a five and five eighth inch outer diameter. If we look here, we are, okay, let's go ahead and look. We're like five, maybe maybe like five and an eighth. Anyways, we are under five and five eighths. 
That's excellent. So far, this is going to work. This is okay for use up to three quarter inch diameter. Now, if you guys have like a terrible goldfish memory, you won't remember, but 0 0.687, 0 0.7, whatever you wanna call it, is less than three quarters of an inch. So this is the correct tool for this job. Now, let me show you how it works. Okay, when you take it out of the box, you'll see you've got like your kind of acne style thread. These things all move around. Basically what you're gonna go ahead and do is you've gotta fish this thing, and I'm gonna show you on the bench first, um, down into the spring and you hook this around the insides and this around the top. And then by tightening this bolt right here, you compress everything. And remember, it's grabbing it in two places on the bottom and two places on the top and it will crunch down the spring and allow you to remove it. Let me just show you real quick, since I showed you with that one first, how this one looks set up because it's easier to show you on the bench than actually on the car. All right, so after some fidgeting, we got this thing in there. Now look, because it's a coil spring, it's gonna be hard to get it perfect. And again, I'm just showing you this on the table, but the idea is you've got your two hooks at the top and you've got your two hooks the opposite direction on the bottom. And as you tighten this nut right here, what happens is it squishes these two together and it squishes your spring together. You're gonna have to play around with it. I'm gonna tell you that right off the bat because it takes a little bit to get these hooked up. Now, these are generally speaking easier to set up because you're just on the outside of the spring and it's just, it's just kind of easier. These are a little bit more finicky, but again, they're not, you know, you need the right one for the right application. It says right on the box that that would be the wrong tool for the job, even if you could get it in there. So we're gonna attempt to go take this, undo it from the new spring, which was just for, you know, just to show you, and we're gonna go try and put it on the vehicle and then remove that spring. All right, we got it in there. Now, I gotta show you one modification, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to do this, but if your spring compressor is too long, basically, if there was a hole right here in the stop top of the spring perch, and there is, but if there was one that was large enough for this rod to go through, there would be no need to do this because as I tighten the rod and it goes down, it would simply go straight through the center of the spring perch or the upper control arm or whatever. But because that's not the case, I need to take up that slack somehow. And I saw a pretty trick video online where they talk about just getting a, like I think it's like a three quarter inch pipe nipple. This one's like five inches long and it just takes up the slack. I put washers on both sides. Now when we tighten this up, it should do the same thing, but it will keep that rod on the end, um, the jacking screw or whatever you wanna call it from bottoming out on the bottom before I can actually get the spring out. Okay, at this point, you've got it in there. Everything's on tight. All we're gonna do now is just take our impact and then just hit this. We wanna make sure we have safety glasses on, gloves, keep your head out of the way, your body out of the way. And we're just gonna lightly start compressing this by tightening this kind of bolt right here. And then we've already undone everything on this side. Okay, we've got all the bolts out of the, the spring perch or all the nuts and everything, it's all loose. So we'll tighten it up and it should come right out. Okay, we came down here. We loosened this up enough that we could just take the spring perch right out. And now everything should just come straight out. We still wanna be careful. It's under a lot of tension. Now we just basically take our impact and we loosen this up slowly. And then this tension will come off the spring and we can remove everything. All right, so it took a little bit of fidgeting but this thing works absolutely perfect. Seriously, absolutely perfect. Um, the only modifications I made to this pipe nipple right here, and that's funny, but that's what it's called. You could use a piece of pipe, it doesn't need to be a threaded nipple, is I just, since it was threaded, I just ground off the edges here so it wasn't sharp and it wouldn't grind into the washers. Uh, you definitely wanna use hardened washers um, and it never hurts to put some anti-seize on that. But this thing came apart totally, totally easy. And yeah, there you go. So we'll repeat that on the other side. But as you can see, honestly, quite simple. 
All right, guys, hopefully you found that video helpful. Honestly, you'll spend the most amount of time just reading the box and getting the tools set up on the springs. Once you've set them up correctly, actually removing uh, the springs, especially with that internal tool, the internal tool is more difficult to set up for sure. Like if you had the choice to choose between either one for your application, I will say that it's easier to set up an external spring compressor, but once the internal one is set up on the springs, you're not having to go back and forth between each side and it honestly feels a lot safer. So um, I kind of like the internal spring compressor, but just take your time setting it up because it's very tedious. Um, everything is basically done now on the car. We've got the springs off. Um, don't go ahead and return your spring compressor once you've removed the springs, unless you're putting on significantly shorter springs. And even then sometimes you still need to compress the springs a little bit to get them back on. So um, that's gonna more or less wrap it up for this video. In the next video, we'll remove the upper and lower control arms. We'll disconnect the spindles. We'll probably have to remove the brakes. Um, and basically then we'll start cleaning everything up. Everything will be disassembled. We'll get all the major crud off all the parts and then we will just kind of dip everything in a degreaser, let it soak for, you know, a couple days, degrease everything because we want to paint everything and make it look nice and pretty before we put it all back on the Comet. But more of that in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, which I hope you did, go back. There's way more content on this channel like this. I'm trying to do these short videos for you guys. So hopefully you find it interesting. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. The subscribe really helps me out because honestly, most of my viewers are not subscribed and it would be much better if you guys were subscribed. So please hit the like and subscribe button and we will check you again next time on Truck and Roll. See ya.